uh, Jonathan Porter. And John, you know, we begin with this. The decision was made yesterday that we were going to upgrade our risk for development from uh, a low to immediate. We made that change in the early morning before AccuWeather early started. And then later on in the morning, we went to a high risk. As far as uh, I can tell, we are the only known weather source that are going this high for the risk for development next week. That's right, we are, and we're concerned. Uh, we're doing that uh, purposely because we're concerned that a tropical storm can form in this vicinity and move toward the United States, and we're not going to have many, many days to track it. All right. Last night, you and I were chatting about, you know what, we're, we're, we're when it comes to forecasting long range, you have the computer guidance that's one tool, but the other thing we like to look at is what does history say? And we have such a large database of tropical storms and hurricanes uh, across the Atlantic Basin. So what we did is where we, look, where we think we're gonna get, be, get that developing in the Northwest Caribbean within 100 nautical miles, what does history tell us where, that storms that move in that area, where do they go? And you can see all of the results here. A lot of storms. And again, this is for the month of September. That's right. The thrust of those storms goes into the Gulf of Mexico. The majority, the wide majority of those storms go into the Gulf and many of them from Louisiana toward Florida. So this is one of the tools that we can look at in terms of helping us to hone on those risk areas. And just to be clear, each one of these lines is a, a tropical storm or hurricane that approached the coast all the way back to 1850. So there's a long database of those tropical storms and hurricanes. Ari and I crunched the numbers this morning. This is what we came up with. So there it is, where this system is going to form, the majority of the storms, tropical storms or hurricane, went to the central Gulf Coast states. You could see Florida's not too far behind the peninsula, but as you get toward Texas, there is less. Keep in mind, this is the entire month of September, John. I suspect that number in Texas would be lower if we would just confine the storms to late September. I think that would be uh, the case as well. And it's also important to point out this is the historical risk of a landfall. This is not the risk that we're assessing with this particular situation, but it gives us a very good indication of what history tells us and climatology tells us. And notice that central Gulf Coast lights up right away with uh, 38% of the storms going in that direction, but then also the Florida Peninsula, 17%. This is why for several days here, ahead of all other sources, we have been stressing that this area between Louisiana and Florida is of greatest concern to us for the storm that hasn't even developed yet. It won't develop till later this weekend or early next week down in the Northwest Caribbean Sea and then move northward. And also, Bernie, you can see this is why we have not been able to all clear anyone yet uh, because there is still can be some risk even back to Texas. All right, that's history. Let's now go to meteorology. What does meteorology say? There are two different. We showed you what the history tells us. Intensification likely, Louisiana to Florida. John, let's talk about the meteorology, what we are seeing right now in the weather and as we look forward in the next week. Several factors that uh, from a meteorology perspective we're looking at that very warm water, all of them point toward a strengthening storm and that's what the concern is with plenty of moisture and lower wind shear. We're going to talk about those particular factors. Yeah, let's talk about the warm water first, John. It's not just warm water here, and this is, this is plenty warm enough. I mean, we're talking water temperatures in the middle to upper 80s. These are running four to six, even a little bit higher, degrees above historic average across much of the Gulf. But it's not right at the surface. This is what you're looking at to see surface temperature. It's through a depth of the ocean. And that's the big concern. That's what we're looking at here. It's called ocean heat content, or also known as fuel in our mind in terms of the types of things that can be rocket fuel for a developing tropical storm or hurricane. And look at this red line, Bernie. This is all time records for ocean heat content in the Gulf of Mexico. That's not good news. History tells us that these storms like to go toward Florida and Louisiana. Let's talk about what the pattern looks like next week, middle part of the uh, week. The trough or dip in the jet stream that starts or kickstarts this process leaves, but there's another one coming behind it. 
It sure is, and it's good. This is going to be really the key to the movement of the storm. Um, is this uh, dip in the jet stream a little bit further to the south? Is it a little bit quicker? That all has ramifications to where this developing storm may want to track. At this point, we we continue to be concerned, as we mentioned, most concerned about Louisiana toward Florida. Uh, with the dip in the jet stream being a little bit faster and a little bit further east, it would guide the storm in that direction. If the jet stream dip is a little bit weaker, Bernie, that's where we start talking about more concerns for parts of the Texas coastline or even down in Mexico. So still all options are open at this particular time. All right, one final word, John. Why are we giving all of this? Uh, we're trying to give people as much notice as possible. There's a reason for this. You may not have a lot of time to prepare for landfall once this forms. That's an important point and we want people to be prepared, not scared. That's very important. Additional providing you with what we know that's in our AccuWeather DNA so that you can make the best decisions and certainly stay with us. Frequent updates on the AccuWeather network, AccuWeather.com and the AccuWeather app. And I think as we, Bernie, you and I were talking about, uh, this is an important point to be yeah. flexible. People may need to alter their plans. This can be a serious hurricane threat into next week. AccuWeather Chief Meteorologist Jonathan Porter. John, thanks for joining us here this morning on AccuWeather Early.